Hello everyone, this is Lam. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you the process of how I made this painting. It is one of those paintings that I was trying something different. I, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And the flowers was a happy accident. And I posted it on Reddit and I got 762 upvotes which I think is the most that I have gotten for all my pores that I posted on Reddit. And the last time I got this many votes was with the Melis Smash Ivy painting that I did. So I'm really surprised and happy with this one. And I want to share with you what I did. And before I do that, I want to give you a quick update of what I have been doing. I know I have not posted any videos on YouTube in a while because I have started my own Facebook group. It's called Heartfelt Arts by Lam. And the banner is coming up in a second. And the reason I started that group is because I really don't have a lot of time editing videos, but I want to keep trying new techniques and I want to share it with my friends. And so these are the new things that I have tried. These are all from live course that I did from my group. And the videos are still out there. If you go join my group, you can watch them. And I do a lot of live pour there so you can get firsthand all the new techniques that I'm trying out. So Highfield Arts by Lam. Okay, anyway, without further ado, let's go into the video and see how I did that painting. Yes, and these are the colors I use. There are a lot of bright colors, especially the greens and the pink. Well, actually, it's more like a fiery orange. But um, a lot of them are custom colors, so it's hard for me to go into exactly what, go, uh, what was in each color. But the whole point is that I want to try very bright green and very bright red and orange and and I'm going to layer them in in an unusual way because usually I go around the color wheel so that the color progression is very smooth but this time I'm going to put the light green right next to the turquoise and because I think that will make some interesting things happen so anyway I have a small cup and a big cup here and I'm loading up the small cup first. What am I going to do? You see. But anyway, I am. Um, see, at this point, I'm still going around the color wheel. I'm going from my red, my pink, my red to my purple and then to my turquoise. And then I am going with this bright uh, yellow and the green. See, I put the yellow before the green and then I flip it. So usually I'll do the green first before the yellow. That's a smoother transaction, but I do the bright yellow right after the blue. So because I want to see what interaction it will make. So I flip the small cup. Now I am layering the big cup. And I am going to do the same thing. So this time I'm just dumping all the paint in the cup on there. Well, actually, this one I'm reversing the orders. I was starting with the gold and then yellow and green and blue and then purple and to the reds. But it really doesn't matter which, uh, which order I did because I'm not doing another flip cup here. What I'm doing is a rain pour over that flip cup. Okay, I'm going to pour some black on top of that cup. And then I'm going to pour this rain right over that flip cup. Look at that blue and green and yellow. I just love that color, that pattern there. But of course that is not going to stay. Now I just 
drizzle some uh, some black all over. And I was covering part of that too because that part, if I mean, I think I have some coppers there and it looks too solid for me. Now I lift the flip cup. There. Okay, it kind of squeezed that pretty <laughs> pattern to the side and I wasn't happy about that. And so I use my fingers, try to rack things up a little bit. Torch. I always need to load up my torch real good. And then I need to pick out some lumps. <laughs> These are actually, you know, some cups are mixed with some older leftover paint so there are lumps in there that i need to pick out so tilt 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 and it became mostly green <laughs> i didn't expect to have so much green and i remember i was like oh my gosh what am i gonna do because as you know already i'm not a green person and this looks entirely too bright for my taste so so i torched the heck out of it all the while thinking about what to do next and part of me really like the bright colors but that green well actually it's not so much of the green it is a bright yellow that is like almost like neon color even though it is not a neon color it is a it's actually artist loves yellow metallic so i decide to rotate it to portrait and this way the pattern makes more sense to me and i feel that i can do something with it i don't know what but I'm going to think of something and let's see okay I decided to do some string poles I was hoping for some nice color down there but I got black well black is Better than nothing because it breaks up that bright pattern. And that that corner is the patch where the that yellow is the most concentrated and it is too bright to my taste. So a little bit of black actually is welcome there. So I'm not going to add any more colors to it. I'm just going with the black. Of course, I cannot do it too many times or it will lose definition real fast. So that's a balancing act. And I'm just contemplating what to do next. Where to string pole next? Or do I want to do string pole? Or do I want to do balloon roll? Or do I want to do this new thing that I have been doing? In my Facebook course, which is to use strainers to make patterns. So many options. <laughs> but anyway, I decided to do a string pull over there because I see this heart shaped pattern that I thought I might do something about it. Maybe make a wing or something. So I did my string. And somehow I got a stroke of inspiration to just pull half of it. And it looks pretty, so I decided to do the other half. And it pulled out some red from there that I really like. And then, oh wow, look at that. Now I see a flower. 
and I have never made this kind of flowers before. And I don't know what what this kind of flower is called. is is basically just one heart shaped leaf with a um, thing poking in the middle. I I see it a lot, but I don't know what it's called. But I've always liked it. So that's what I have in mind, and I think this has turned out great, and it has potential. It's changing the composition, and all of a sudden, it is starting to make sense. Even though it is not a good focal point in a traditional sense, you know, traditionally we like to do the the rules of thirds that you want your focal point to be right at the intersection of of two of the lines that cut off the picture into thirds. And this one is way too low, but but still, I think it can work. So I want to make another one just like it. Are similar to it. It doesn't seem too complicated. Now the key to doing this is that I want to do a white outline, and I want the string to stay well within the white. I don't want jagged edge. The edge. I want a solid white edge. So usually when I do string pole, I do go over a little bit so that the edge would not be so smooth. But this one, I really, really want a more or less smooth edge. So that's what I'm doing. So I pull that. Here is. The other flower, and I just use my finger to touch up the center a little bit. See, easy peasy, no sweat. <laughs> That's how I like it. If only I could make everything so easy, <laughs> but it doesn't always happen. And of course, I. Tend to overcomplicate things as well. Like this one, I'm not happy with the edge down there, so I added a little bit more white to kind of give it a more complete look. And then I start worrying about the stems because flowers they don't just float there; they need a stem. To attach to and some more leaves, just to make them look more like flowers and make the composition more complete. And how to make stems is another question, because I don't want them to be too representational. I mean, it's obviously not a realistic painting, and so I'm not going for realism here. I just want something that kind of suggests a stalk, so, and the flower on the right it has a natural, you know, green stalk that can I mean it kind of suggests a green stalk there anyway. So I I need to make something similar to that for the flower on the left. But anyway. So I here I'm trying to make another leaf. So I'm laying down some colors, and then I'm gonna pull. Yeah, the string pull is a long and slow process. So I get the string here, again, I don't want this to be too jagged of a leaf. I want it to have a leaf shape. So at this point, I am really getting happy with the picture. 
I just need to add a small leaf here and there, like maybe one right there. But I don't want to do too much to disturb the composition. But that flowers on the right still needs something. The composition is not balanced. I mean, I can fuss with that leaf down there, but I still need a bigger leaf that goes up on the right to balance things out. So I mark out that place right there and I'm going to put some green down some green and some turquoise I just lay it down and I'm not going to do any white or anything because I don't want the leaf to stand out. I don't want it to distract from the flowers. I just want it to be an accompaniment. So. Now when it comes to leaf, I take the same approach as the flower. I do two halves. I do the left half and the right half so that it looks like there's a vein in the middle. So that's good. That looks good. I like it. I'm happy with it. So just final torching and it is one of those paintings that it gives me a sense of completion that I just think that is a good place to stop that I don't want to overdo it I don't want to overwork it and it is not the best composition it's not the most complicated that I have done but I really do like it because the natural contrast of the colors and the flowers just perfect accents so here is close up and i really like those yellow green lacings around the flowers well that one flower in particular it just has some interesting texture and interesting contrast to this piece I'm really happy with it. And this is the dry result. It dried perfectly. And I'm so glad that it turned out well. And as I like to say, life is like an acrylic pour. You never know what you're gonna get. And as I try to, I always try different things and a lot of times it doesn't work out. So when it does work out, it feels so good. And again, I'm going to list this piece in my SC shop. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the description box. And I also want to invite all of you again to join my Facebook group because I do a lot of live pours there. I am constantly trying new techniques and I have done so many different things on there already. and. I never know what I'm going to do next. So I want, I really want to share them with all of you because you're my friends and it's just hard for me to edit them fast enough to post them on YouTube. So if you would uh, go find me on Facebook or I'll post the link uh, in the description box as well. So anyways, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it please share and like and subscribe 
I appreciate your comments, and you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Be well. Take care.